What's up, Ancestral Minions? Colin here, the WOW CEO, for another video on your favorite topic, the carnivore diet. What do you do when you're bored on a carnivore diet? I'm gonna give you some tips that I've been doing because I have gotten bored on a carnivore diet. I've been eating a lot of steak, and then I was doing steak plus ground beef, and then I was like, oh, uh, I need to do some fish or something else, and then I started cooking more meals, and then I was craving salads, and then rebel ice cream, and then heavy cream, and ah. So some strategies for how I'm thinking about this right now and what to do and how I think a flexible carnivore diet is the future of this movement and probably the best thing for most people. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm getting back into cooking. I'm trying to learn the basic cooking technique like salad dressings like Caesar I made from scratch the other day. I did a blue cheese from scratch and I'm using as clean ingredients as I can. So like it might be avocado oil. It'll usually be most of the ingredients that I was eating before that fall into like the no grain, no legume, you know, no sugar category that my body usually does okay with. And the more I think about this in general, talking to the average person, I'm not gonna tell them they should do a carnivore diet. If I'm talking to the average person and I'm gonna give them advice, I'm gonna tell them, you can eat anything you want as long as you buy the raw ingredients and cook it at home. And if America did that, we would take the obesity rate, I mean like what, 40, 50%, we would take it down to, I would guesstimate at least under 10, maybe under 5%. That's how powerful this is. And I'm gonna do a video on that another day. The reason I'm getting to classical cooking is because I can control all the ingredients. I'm not eating out of a package. I'm building from the ground up, controlling the salt, the oil, everything. And that's always gonna be the best way to build your diet is from the raw ingredients up. So what I was doing on the carnivore diet is pretty much a steak for breakfast every day. I would fast 16 to 20 hours. I had my first meal between like 3 to 5 p.m., sometimes kick it back late to 6. And then I would break my fast with a ribeye or a strip and then maybe have a couple things on the side here and there or maybe have some leftover ground beef if I wanted to get more protein. Then for meal two, which is always a bit smaller, it was a little bit more mixed. Maybe I'd have some dairy. Maybe I'd have some like leftover ground beef. If there was like salmon or fish or whatever, I'd have that. And that worked relatively well. And then I got bored. And my pal, my body was screaming, hey, eat something else. And again, I think this is an evolutionary adaptation. I think humans are designed to seek out variability in nature. And if you eat the same thing over and over again, you can get food allergies, but also you can make yourself fragile because you're getting the same nutrient profile, right? You're not getting a variety of sources. And it's just one of those first principles of nature, variability. So what I started doing is I started doing like rebel ice cream and I was doing like full fat raw dairy and things like that. Cheese, maybe almond flour tortilla every so often, although I don't really like those. They don't agree with me that much. And then it evolved into doing like iceberg lettuce and some romaine and just very kind of low toxin plant foods and then fruit. And you can take this too far, of course. I'm doing these things within the confines of foods I already know I can do well on. So for me, a carnivore diet wasn't a means to solve an autoimmune issue. Uh, it does help with back pain, and so I still try to stay away from grains. But I think after going full strict carnivore, coming back a little bit to like, I don't know, 70 to 80% of my calories from animals, and then throwing in foods that my body responds to well, for me, to have the enjoyment factor, to have the satisfaction, to have the variety, these are the benefits I get from having certain other foods that don't necessarily fall within the strict carnivore category. So that's the first thing I've done. If that's not really for you, then I highly recommend sticking with animal foods, but learning recipes like slow cooked salmon, for example. We made this three days last week because it is so good. Okay, so you get a whole piece of salmon, pat it down in salt, you pat it down, let some of the moisture come out that firms up the texture and makes your fish taste delicious. You can do this with every single fish you cook. Just rub it down in salt and a little bit of sugar or, or just salt, that's fine too. And then let it sit for 10 minutes, let some of the water come out and then cook it, so much better. You take this salmon after you've done that, let it sit for five, 10 minutes, whatever, put it in a 225 degree oven on maybe a bed of herbs or a rack, and then you cook it for about 35 to 45 minutes. It is gonna be the creamiest, softest, most tender salmon you've ever had. And that technique now is in the back. So now every time I have a piece of salmon, that technique, it's up here. So when I was first doing steak every day, I got my pan frying in the oven, cast iron every day technique, the same way I cook steak every single day to now that I can cook it to perfection without even needing a thermometer most of the time. You can find that video up here. And then that's now in the back. But again, that got boring. And so now I'm looking into how to even mix up the steak. Can I broil it? I haven't really figured that out just yet because I don't know if my stove gets hot enough. And at a lot of restaurants, they do broil steak, but they have like these massively hot broilers that can do that. So I'm, I'm still trying to figure that out. That'll probably add some variety. Maybe I could dice steak up and fry it small. I don't know. There's a lot of other things I can do to mix this up. So I haven't even really explored some of these options, but I've gone to adding more plant foods and fruit 
in addition to my carnivore diet while keeping some of the other carnivore diet staples. I've also been doing cod liver pate, which you can find the recipe up here. And I've generally been trying to look for other things like a tuna confit I've been messing with or doing a seafood soup or doing like an egg based chicken drop egg drop soup. There's so many different things that you can do, but you got to go find the recipes. You have to get creative because I would say the biggest enemy to sustainability on a carnivore diet is lack of variety. Some people do just fine eating like one or two ribeyes every single day. It's just not my thing. If you grew up eating other foods, if you enjoy other foods, if you're a foodie like me, if you enjoy nice restaurants, it's going to feel limiting. It's going to feel stifling. So I would highly recommend if you want to stay Sir Carnivore to figure out a lot of recipes and include every possible animal in the animal kingdom that you can get your hands on. There's even some farm-raised quail that we do here. Uh, I've been doing more salmon. I've been doing some frozen tuna, maybe some sea bass from time to time. I eat a lot of salmon roe, and then I'll still do like heavy cream and some grass-fed cheese every so often. So let me know, do you have any strategies for keeping the carnivore diet less boring, for mixing it up, for adding variety? Let me know in the comments below. And if there's anything I missed or any suggestions, please put that below as well because then you can help other people that are watching this video. Like, subscribe, share if you want to. And I'll see you hey, next Hey, hey, Colin here. Got a freebie for you. Click on the button below to go to the ancestralmind.com and download the seven principles of living wild. This is a short PDF that's got some of the main principles such as real food, sleep, movement, and a couple more that are gonna help you live more ancestrally in accordance with your genes.